So, Andrew Tate, great to have you here. Thank People you, are so terrified when talking about Harry and Meghan because they're worried that they're going to be accused of racism. You're clearly not worried about that. No, I'm not worried about that. I refuse to live in an absolute fantasy and people are dodging around the true issue. Uh, I'm a person of color myself, but I don't think that's why ins I'm inspired to speak the truth. The fact that racism is being used as a justification for the fact that she isn't liked by the majority of people is a cop out. It's not the case. She does not garner any kind of racism in day to day life. She's less dark skinned than me, and I certainly haven't suffered from any racism. So I don't think race has anything to do with it. I think she's just a dislikable person and is trying to find a another excuse for that, for people to treat her that way. And this fits into one of your bigger narratives, doesn't it? Which is that you're very worried that men today seem to be embracing the idea of being victims. And you say that one of the reasons that you are a resilient human being is because you have lived through trauma but that trauma actually propelled you to success rather than bringing you down to victimhood. Yeah, the baseline of masculinity is that bad things are going to happen to you and you're going to absorb them and you're going to use them and to grow into a more competent individual. If you look at what society expects of men and what even females expect of men, they expect a man of competence. And for you to be competent, you have to have lived through some things. To be good at being a man, you have to have had a hard life. If you look at any superhero, his life was hard. This is the reality of it. And I think that the demasculinization of men is a genuine plague we are suffering with in the West. And Harry, in many ways, is he's a he's ended up a beacon for that. You know, so with, you think he has been emasculated by Meghan? To, to a degree, certainly. He certainly lost a lot of the respect of the people and his and the the people who were fans of the royal family. They certainly lost a lot of their respect and. Megan has something to do with that. It's certainly the way she talks about the royal family as a whole, the way she talks to him and about him. There's certainly an element of people waiting for him to stand up and say, listen, that's the royal family. You can't talk that way or you decided to be with me. There were certain things you were expected to do. But he simply just allows her to demasculinize him in public and everybody feels uncomfortable with it. People also feel uncomfortable now to have conversations about race because yeah. it's so easy for the MSM to accuse you of racism. Now, I grew up believing in a colorblind world, and that's what I was told at school, that we yeah. shouldn't actually obsess about someone's race. Yeah. Now, if you sign up to that philosophy, you're described as being racist. And it feels to me like Megan has really utilized that. Well, there are certain buzzwords. There are certain words you can hide behind in modern society, which people are not allowed to challenge. And it allows you to have ideas inside of a vacuum where you can develop these narratives that are never directly contested. And racism is one of them. You're completely right. People can just cry racist and you're not allowed to challenge the idea. And I stand up and say, I do not think that the problems with the public perception of Megan have anything to do with her skin color whatsoever especially the fact that she isn't even particularly dark. I find it very strange. A lot of the people who are standing up for her, I've seen many liberals, uh, black liberals from all around the world who are standing up for her saying the race card, the race card. Why would you allow somebody to use the race card when they're not genuinely suffering from it? Doesn't that disrespect all the people who actually suffer from genuine racism? Well, I think, I think it does. So because, do I. Because there are so many contradictions in that Netflix series, because Megan actually says the only time she ever experienced racism was someone in L.A. calling her mum, who actually does have much darker yeah. skin than her, uh, the N-word. But actually, Megan said she had experienced no racism herself, yet she enters the royal family, and all of a sudden it helps her victim narrative to, to suggest that she's been a victim of racism. And actually if you saw her wedding, I mean, the British public completely embraced her. Well, if the British public had a problem with race, I don't understand how we have a prime minister who's darker skinned than her, a mayor of London who's darker skinned than her. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense on any level. I, I would state that England is one of the least racist nations on the planet. And, and this is one of the things that's kind of detrimental. The people who are obsessed with race and obsessed with racism, constantly calling it out, they in many ways speak it into existence because most of us, like you said, like yourself, like myself, we don't see color. We treat people with respect. And if somebody's a likable person, they're a likable person. And if they're a dislikable person, they're a dislikable person. And their color has very little to do with it. It's just kind of ironic that nobody else wants to stand up and point out the glaringly obvious that she's, no, nobody looks at her and thinks, wow, look how dark skinned you are. So it's kind of incredible that this is the angle she's going down and nobody else seems to want to mention it and I don't understand why.